Ina alham duty law wasalat wasalamala wa rasulullah. This is our class on the lawful and the unlawful, and what we've been discussing uh, since last week. Uh, last week when we met uh, is the lawful and the unlawful in regards to working certain jobs. Working certain jobs. And we talked about how the prophet Muhammad, again, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came into a, a narcissistic era, the medieval period, the dark ages. That's why they're called dark. You know, they were the most oppressive times in mankind's history. People didn't have rights. People looked down on others. It was all about uh, status. It was all about who had the most money, the most status, the most, the best, the best. Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to teach us good manners. And by teaching us good manners, in turn, he taught Islam. And one of the things that he emphasized is we do not look down upon another human being. You know, we don't go around thinking that we're better than others. This is the, the, what caused Iblis to get cast out of paradise, as we talked about in the story of Adam, alayhi salam, okay? To go around thinking yourself uh, over better than someone else, this is bad. Y'all understand that? So uh, we don't look down on a person because of his work. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa salam, said it would be better if a person were to cut some wood, put it on his back, and go out and sell it than to ask somebody for a handout. And also in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the rich man, I mean the poor man, the miskeen, which means needy. The needy man is not the one that sits out on the corner asking for a handout. The needy man has too much inner pride. He's not gonna ask you because he's afraid that you might tell him no. So the needy man would go out and, and chop wood and sell it. He, rather than ask you uh, to help him when you may turn him down. So Islam teaches us to not go around looking down on people because of their profession. We don't look down on the farmers. The farmers get some of the best reward because whatever they plant, when it grows, whatever of Allah's creation benefits from what they plant, that's ongoing charity, you know, for that person, okay, after death. So we talked about agriculture, jobs and agriculture, we don't look down upon. Well, let's look at some other jobs. Let's put the PowerPoint up on the screen. Can y'all see that I do it? Oh, let me do it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still just getting it together. Okay, here we go. So we're going to speak about working in other professions besides uh, agriculture. What is the benefit of it? Well, we talked about uh, what about having a job that in, that requires you to make statues? Or say, for example, this is one of the questions I get. Sister Layla, I'm going to school to be a digital animator, to be a digital engineer, or something like that, a computer uh, animator. Islam forbids uh, making statues of people statues of animals or anything that has a soul. And in addition to that, Islam forbids us of drawing, um, painting a duplicate of a, anything that has a soul. Remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke against that. And we have this hadith uh, from Ibn Abbas. He said, uh, uh, a man came to him and said, oh, Ibn Abbas, I earn my living with my own hands. I make statues. And Ibn Abbas said, I'm going to tell you what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, Allah will punish anyone who makes statues. 
until he commands you to breathe a soul into them, which you'll never be able to do. And when Ibn Abbas saw the man get angry, I mean, or scared, he said, if you have to do this because it's your job, then make pictures or sculptures of trees or anything that has no soul. So that's the answer we give uh, to animators, a cartoonist. There's no such thing as an elephant that can fly. There is no such thing as a man who's half spider. There's no such thing as a man that can fly through the, through the sky. There's no such thing as a woman who's strong and, and, and a wonder woman with a whip. You can draw animated cartoons and stuff, guys, because these are not real people. There is no such thing as these, these uh, uh, Marvel comic guys. And also cartoons are different anyway, because you will give them eyes that are not like the human. Okay. Look at anime, beautiful anime. People don't look like those anime characters. What do they do? They have ears like uh, a bird. There's no such thing as a human being with ears like a bird or ears that go like this or ears that go like that or horns. So that type of stuff, these are creations that are creatures, that's the word. These are figures of things that don't exist. So they don't really have a soul. So there's nothing wrong with you being a cartoonist as long as you're drawing cartoons. There's nothing wrong with being a caricature as long as you're doing caricatures. A caricature is an exaggerated person. You know, maybe you want to do a caricature of Layla. So you'll make my face long down here. You'll make my nose stick out like a Pinocchio and you'll make my eyes big. That's not a real, that's not me. I don't look like that for real. So those type of jobs are okay, guys. Y'all understand? Mickey Mouse. There's no such thing as a walking, talking mouse. Thank you. You can draw that. Dumbo the elephant. There's no such thing as an elephant that has ears that he fly with. So that stuff is okay. These are things that don't have souls. But to do a, a portrait of me, you want Layla to pose? So you can paint me? So you can sculpt me? So you can duplicate me? This is haram. Y'all understand now that I break it down. I hope I did. Okay. Um, also, pictures. This does not apply to pictures because, again, pictures is technology. That's a camera. The camera takes the picture. Can I be a nation photog a, a, a nature photographer? Yes. Can I be a human photographer? Yes, as long as you're not taking pictures of people naked and things like that. No porno. You're not taking pictures of Layla to post up in a sexual manner. Or, uh, then that's fine. Okay, so you can be a cartoonist. You can be a computer animation engineer. You can do all of that. Okay. What about intoxicants and drugs? manufacturing drugs and toxicants. Remember, Islam forbids any participation in promoting intoxicants, whether it be to make them, to sell them, to use them, or to give them away. In fact, Allah curses people like this. So in the case of intoxicants, such as hashish, cocaine, marijuana, growing them, distributing them, consuming them, all of that is haram. So as a Muslim, we cannot work in an industry or a business or a profession that deals or promotes, you know, uh, anything that's an intoxicant. Stay away from that. Say no to drugs. Remember, guys, Allah commands us as Muslims to engage in trade and commerce. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning. Uh, uh, um, oh, where is it at? I'm sorry. 
Others travel through the land seeking the blessings of Allah and others fight in the way of Allah. So there's nothing wrong with that. This is considered struggle. This is considered jihad. It's jihad to go out and seek your, your livelihood, just as it's jihad to fight on the battlefield. And Allah speaks about how he gives us knowledge of technology to build ships and stuff for us to go out and earn our, our living. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, and you see the ship on the ocean cleaving the waves. Allah allows this so that you can seek his blessings and be thankful of him. Also, Allah describes the winds and the movements of the ocean that he sets forth for us to seek our livelihood. He says in the interpretation, the meaning among his signs is that he sends the wind as heralds of good news in order so that you can taste his mercy. And so the ship can sail by his command and you can seek of his blessings. This is all the wisdom and power of Allah. Allah does this for us. Okay, so working is something that we should do, that men should do. The men are the providers and the maintainers of the over their families. In fact, Allah even made Mecca a commercial center for people to earn their livelihood. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of meaning. Did we not establish for you a sanctuary to which is brought produce of all kinds? This was an answer to Abraham's prayer. So again, guys, we are encouraged as human beings to go out, to marry, to have children, and to go out and make use of this beautiful earth that Allah has placed us upon to seek our livelihood and our means of support, okay? So that's what you tell those brothers that don't wanna work. You will come upon some lazy, trifling Muslim men that don't wanna work. You ask them what you ain't fulfilling your purpose here. You were created to worship Allah. You were put here on this earth to go out and seek your livelihood. So you ain't qualified to marry me. That's what you women need to tell these brothers. Okay? They're weak. Okay? Also, guys, Allah lets us know that he also shows his blessings upon us with the different times of the year. We have the winter, the spring the summer, the fall, so we can travel in security. This is what he gave to the Quraysh, and this is what he gives to the rest of us. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning for the security of the Quraysh, their security is traveling by winter and summer. So let them worship the Lord of the Kaaba, who provides them with food against hunger and makes them safe against fear. So Allah wants us to go out, guys, and seek our livelihood, seek our means of survival. He created this earth to provide that for us, okay? And also, guys, Islam does not teach for us to spend all our time worshiping Allah. In fact, it's about balance. It's about balance. We work and we, we, we worship Allah. The prophet taught us there's a time for this and a time for that. But we have to know when to close up shop and go to the mosque to pray. For you brothers, when you're selling and doing your business, you have to remember to stop to make your prayers at their prescribed time. This is what Allah means when he says, men whom neither business nor sale can take away from the remembrance of Allah. So you brothers have to remember, you know, to go to work, but close down the shop to perform your obligations to Allah. Remember, like I told y'all with that hadith today, nothing comes before the obligations of Allah. Not no man, not no woman, not no sex, not no money, none of that. Okay? The true believers are men, you know, who take care of their business in the world and also remember Allah. Okay. 
for those men that do that, listen to what the prophet said. He said, an honest and trustworthy um, merchant will be amongst the martyrs of the day of judgment. An honest and trustworthy merchant will be with the prophets and the truthful on the day of judgment. Okay, so Islam wants you brothers to go out and seek our livelihood. But remember Allah in the process. And that's how our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. He was eager to nurture the spiritual aspect of himself. That's why he built the mosque in Medina on the foundation of piety and seeking the pleasure of Allah. And as a gathering of place for worship and as a university for teaching and learning, but also the men worked. Abu Bakr was a merchant. Uh, 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 Umar was a merchant. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam provided for his families. The Prophet organized the roles of business dealing. He organized the rules and methods behind it. He taught us no cheating, no hoarding, no, uh, no undercutting. And if you look at the uh, companions, you see that they came from different backgrounds. Some of them were craftsmen. Some of them were farmers. Some of them were professionals like Abu Bakr and Umar. And some of them were just workers. Each of the companions, they loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they obeyed him. And you look at them, look at their stories, you will find that each of them had a job. They provided and maintained their families. They would travel to do that, but they would still come to the mosque to pray. They were still on the battlefield and all of that. So again, Islam, I tell y'all, came about during the dark ages. It brought balance to a cruel world, a narcissistic world. The Prophet Muhammad taught men that they are the providers, maintainers, and protectors over women. That is their job to treat the women with love, respect, and honor, and to support the women with, you know, from their hands. Islam honored women and raised us up from the level of an animal to a human being and gave us rights as it gave men rights and our rights complement and balance out one another. Okay. And you'll see that with the companions. Okay. We have the hadith how when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions migrated to Medina, the Ansar, they opened up their homes to the new immigrants. They offered their food and money to them too. But the, 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 the immigrants were such proud men. They told them, look, we are the Quraysh. We are merchants. Just show us where the marketplace is. Show us where the marketplace is and we'll go out and earn our money. That shows how these men, you know, were prideful men. They weren't like a lot of the men today are don't want to work. You want your wife to go out and work while you sit at home and get on the internet and pretend to be a scholar when you don't even know how to spell the word. You know, it's a shame how you young brothers are today. It's really disgraceful. If the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were alive today, he'd be at shock at how you brothers try to take the, the wimpy way out. When him and his companions, they told Ansar, we are, we are the Quraysh. We are merchants. Just show us where the marketplace is. We, we know how to sell. We know how to earn our money, earn our keep. They weren't lazy. Okay. Now, there are certain kinds of jobs, though, that are haram for us. And we talked about the oldest profession in the world, prostitution. Under no circumstances can a woman prostitute herself. Like I had to tell that sister, we had the sister come in here for the Islam Q&A show last week, talking about how her husband divorced her. So she put a camera in her bedroom and she videoed chats me and naked. A stock for law. This is haram. This is prostitution. We don't do that. Belly dancing 
and all that stuff, dancing for money, dancing on camera. That stuff is nasty. It's just, it's haram. And, it's, and there's other professions too that are haram. For example, it's haram to do business in, where, that deals with alcohol, drugs, pigs. We can't sell pork. A lot of you brothers from the Arabic lands have convenience stores here where I live and you sell pork. You sell drug paraphernalia, alcohol, cigarettes. This is haram. We can't sell statues of people. We cannot sell idols. We cannot sell anything like that. Okay? And we have to be honest and truthful when we are doing our sales. We cannot cheat people, lie about what we're selling. We can't lie about our goods. We have a hadith where as once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the, to the mosque and he saw some people selling and he said, oh, merchants. He said, merchants will be raised up on the day of judgment as wicked people, except those who fear Allah, those who do good deeds and who are honest and truthful. So the Prophet taught the, the, the Arabs, the Quraysh, the people, we have to be honest because back then they would sell and they would lie and sell their goods and overbid each other and all of that the prophet brought rules and guidelines to prevent that we have a hadith whereas one of the companions said we were business people the prophet would come to us and say oh merchants beware of lying he warned against this he said on the day of judgment there will be liars who, who Allah will not purify. One of them is a person that swears to the truth when he's lying about what he's selling. Okay? So we have to beware of cheating, lying, swearing by Allah. And we also have to stay away from interest. If a person charges, you charge something in price, don't make the person pay you more than what it's worth. So these are some of the things I wanted to go over today about business transactions, okay? Most things are lawful in Islam, uh, uh, okay? But there are certain guidelines we have to beware of. No cheating, no lying, you know, no defrauding people, no interest, no consumption or selling or supporting of anything haram. Okay, I'm going to stop right here.